all. Uh, so yeah, the next uh, few minutes, we're just going to spend looking at what is involved with your winter grazing plan and some things to consider as you go about that. So uh, although it may seem like a lot at times, uh, the management plan is pretty straightforward. For most of you, you already have it in your head and it's just a matter of documenting it. And first of all, we have to do the planning, which a lot of you have already done. Um, you'll have started this when you went with paddock selection way back in 2020. And then putting in some basic information about your crop, what animals are gonna be grazing it, the land, the soils, and that's information that you're already gonna have, especially if you've already been done down some of the farm plan process already. And this will inform you of what aspects of your winter grazing poses the most risk, and then you'll be able to put some plans in place around it. Then you're gonna sort of spell out how you're gonna manage those risks. And that may be, as just Tom's talked about, different strategic grazings, how you're gonna graze the crop, how you're gonna place the baler out, where you're gonna put the portable troughs, et cetera. And then you can tell your plan from there. So each farm is an individual farm that you're going to plan it for your farm. And each farm will be different in regards to how you do it, depending on what works and you know your property the best. Then it's a matter of actually having a check and seeing what's happening and how you're going along the way. We know over winter things can change just like anything and just like all farm plans, whether it's a business plan, the health and safety plan that you regularly check on now, uh, that they are all live and they need to be maintained and reviewed. So don't be afraid that during the winter, if it needs change, that's fine. Make those plans and change it and uh, work to it and review it as you go. At the end of the day, we're trying to show our best and what work with good management practices and make sure that we're having a limited effect on our waterways. So the next, what we're going to go through now is the eight steps that Beef and Lamb has in our forage cropping management plan. As you'll see, those first few steps are really at the planning stage in terms of this plan. And it's now up to you to really go out and actually do it. And that's at the the point we're at now. So this, the template you choose might not have all these steps in it. However, we recommend that you take them into account as you're going about your plan. So a management plan we will take you through today is really meant to be completed before the crop grows into the ground. However, we know that we've missed that opportunity this winter and instead want to focus our attention on how we manage our grazing of our crops and land post grazing. I'm gonna to go to the next slide, please. So we, this means we really want to focus on getting a risk assessment, assessment of the paddocks we've already cropped. So plan out how you'll graze the crops. So as I've already mentioned, regards to whether that's the direction, uh, where you're gonna place your feed. It may be if you're just grazing sheep, how, are you gonna do blocks? Are you gonna do strips? Uh, prepare for any adverse events that mother nature may throw our way. Have a, have a plan in place in regards to where's the shelter coming from? What direction is the weather coming from? Plan out where you're going to do, what you're gonna do once the crop is finished being grazed. And this is really important, having a post grazing plan, whether you're gonna be putting in a catch crop and some of this will be covered later on with Dawn, uh, or you are going to be just waiting to be able to cultivate that later in the year. And make sure that you are, we're doing the doing it as writing down what we're going to do and documenting how we're going to show our commitment to winter, which you're already all doing. It's just a matter of now putting it, that documentation in place. And it's really good to involve your staff as you go about this as well, so that everybody's on the same wavelength and singing off the same song sheet, as we like to say, when it comes to actually doing it during the winter. When it comes to intensive winter grazing, there are some pretty big consequences if we don't do things well. And based, this is all based on the management of our crop. We could have a negative impact on our waterways and the people's connections to them. And we also have risk of harming our animals' health and welfare as well as our team. So we wanna keep things as simple as possible as well. Winter can be a stressful time, so it's good to plan ahead and make things get right. And just like anything, we don't know what's going to happen and the unexpected. If something happened over the winter and you, you had that plan in your head and you weren't able to take that out and someone else had to come in and actually do it, they'd be able to pick up this plan and see where you're heading and what you were doing as well. So you want to focus your attention on think and think about 
when we're trying to manage our potential environmental impact and, what, and including thinking about sediment, where's the sediment flowing, uh, path pathogens like E. coli, so our waterways, where are they in relation to our grazing, phosphorus and nitrogen also getting into the waterways. So thinking about those buffering zones and uh, maybe even if you haven't left a buffering zone now at this date, that you may be able to leave a bit of more of crop uh, left out and graze that last at the other end, as Tom's talked about with the critical source area, you can also do that um, to be able to limit this. So it's about identifying and mapping it out. So here is an example of how that may look, and there's different templates available to be able to do that. Uh, as I said, you've probably already got it in here, it's just a matter of documenting it. Map out how you intend to graze the paddock. So you can see there, it's got the gate, the water lines, cultivation direction. Down the bottom there, there's a critical source area. And you're able to note down all those bits in it, ensuring that you've got the clean water, you've, you've covered the animal welfare side of it. We've also looked at it from an environmental aspect as well. Um, involve the staff, even get the kids involved. There's a bit of colouring in, make it a family affair. Uh, try and make it winter as exciting as possible. Also, as we go about managing our environmental risks over winter, it's really important that we think about other aspects and having animals while we've got animals on the crop. And this includes making sure they've got the right amounts of feeds. And really at this time of year, just before you'll be going on to crop some of you, is really getting making sure that you've got those crop yields measurements done so that you're not taking estimates and you've actually got some real good numbers to be able to work off. You can get this usually done by um, independently, uh, your fa farmlands or your PGGs, your farm, um, farm sources will all be able to help you out with people as well. Um, but also there is some really easy guides in regards to being able to do that as a team on farm and actually having a walkthrough on a nice day in the next few weeks. Um, we also want to make sure um, that you can able to do a feed budget um, and be able to assess the demands and supplement required. Uh, you can use the Feed Smart app um, for sheep and beef farmers. Uh, that is available and it's available offline as well. It can give you a really good guideline in regards to doing that. And you can check out the Dairy NZ facts and figures in the Beef and Lamb Knowledge Hub for being able to get support when it comes to measuring those crop yields and for other feed budgeting tools. So as we talked about a wee bit before, it's really important to think ahead of what you will do and if there's a lot of rain or snow and have a plan of where your stock will go. How long can they stay there if we did have a couple of days of rain? What food and water will they need and how will you monitor them? And if you can try and you can maybe try and use those drier paddocks from the start. And hopefully you've already thought about that when you've gone about that paddock selection at the beginning. And it's something to think about as you're going through winter now and you're getting around the farm that hasn't been cropped and you're thinking about where you might be placing next year's crop paddocks to actually just see over the winter where water lies in them and are they suitable? Because this is the best time of year to be able to see where that water is rather than trying to guess in the summer when you're making those selections. Uh, you can always budget an extra feed. For sheep, it's 10% extra is the rule of thumb. Um, and you might want to contact your grazier or your herd owners and check that you're both working on the same understanding. So having a really good communication line in regards to that is really um, essential um, and make sure that you're not assuming anything. And Dawn will pick up more details on this when it comes um, regards to implementing your plan B. Next slide there, please. Okay, do I go back one, um, please? Because we've actually missed one. I've been talking to the other one. Yeah, no, back one. Yep. Cool. So um, just in regards to what happens if the worst happens, uh, keep assuring that you're assessing your animal health, your body condition. Uh, you have got the option to potentially alter mob or herd sizes where it suits. So um, make making sure that you're watching your, what your stock is doing and that will give you a really good idea to their health and their comfort as well. 
Uh, use those feed planning tools and get additional feed if needed and shift your stock to those sheltered areas or laneways or look at a sacrifice paddock if you need. Uh, there is also uh, guide support and guidance by calling 0800 beef lamb or 0800 4 dairy NZ when you, if you need more support and guidance in regards to your feed and you'll get a free stock take assessment of your feed plans and needs and any support you should need by calling those numbers. It's also um, a good chance to be able to let you know about the 0800 farming number. And we know farmers are working hard uh, to ensure that the animals environment are well cared for, but not everyone gets it right all the time. And this is where we're providing support. And it may be simply that you've actually gone past a property in the last couple of weeks and you, um, you might not know who they were, but you can see what you see, can potentially maybe see what their plan is. Um, from the way they've set up their paddock and you might be able to suggest a, a bit of suggestion in regards to actually if they put a bit more of a um, buffer zone there as they go to graze it it'll, it'll do them a lot better this winter and so if you see something that doesn't look right you can call 0800 farming the calls are confidential and sector representatives in the local year will visit the farm and work with the farmer to address any problems or be able to advice and anybody that's been part of that in the last couple of years has really appreciated that thing and it's not a dob your, dob your neighbour in line, it is simply being able to provide support. Again, you do not know what you do not know. So just finally to finish off, in regards to this section, uh, we need to keep monitoring and reviewing. Although it's something we tend to forget about, keep track on how you're getting on and what you've done to adapt your plan is really important. And it helps ensure that we're getting better every year and sharing what we've learned with others. And Feel free to steal good ideas from uh, with pride from somebody else. Remember, not all photos are bad photos. You can take good photos over winter as well. And um, you may have heard of the hashtag paint a better picture. And that is also up and running again this year as well in regards to being able to share some of those really good images and some of that great work that you guys are doing. But I think you all can take a pat on the back as well. Uh, but just uh, you're doing some great work and you're working in the right direction. But now is just time to really encourage you to document it. So just uh, there's a few winter planning resources that you can um, go on. You will have seen the Ministry of Industry, uh, Ministry for Primary Industries released one as well. Uh, this has been guidance off industries, good farm planning that's been done over the years and is based on science and, and takes it in. Hopefully in the mailbox in the last couple of weeks through your newspaper, you have seen this checklist in the middle. And this is a great one just to get you started. Sit down with a cup of tea with the staff and go through this one and just see where you're at. And then there is the both the beef and lamb and dairy and Z winter grazing resources that are available through the website. And those links will be put up for you as well. Uh, you can also attend winter grazing workshops, uh, which are very short and sweet if you need any extra help. And there's a few drop-in sessions around that. So again, just check out the different events on the uh, e-diaries and on B uh, dairy and Z's events diaries if you're wanting to get any more support following this evening.